Home Assistant just introduced one of their biggest features of the year, called Blueprints, which allows for more rapid creation and sharing of automations. But what are they, how do they work, and how do we use them? That's what we're covering today. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Let's talk Home Assistant Blueprints. Blueprints was announced last week at the Home Assistant Conference, which by the way, if you missed it, it was a really excellent event with tons of interesting content and talks to watch. And along with that, they also introduced a new release and a new release cycle. They also pulled the wool over our eyes when we were expecting them to announce version 1.0, only for them to change the naming scheme and release version 2020.12. So that was a pretty funny moment during the conference. But getting back to Blueprints, what exactly are they? Blueprints allows you to create templates for commonly created automations, meaning you can quickly build out your automations by reusing existing code. For example, if each room in your house had its own individual heating controls, firstly, you're probably a baller, but secondly, instead of having to manually create each automation individually, Blueprints would allow you to quickly build out these automations with the only thing you need to change is the temperature sensor and the heating switch. And don't worry, if that doesn't make sense, hopefully it will all become clear soon. Another awesome feature of Blueprints is they allow for much greater collaboration with the community. Home Assistant has included a new section on their forum for Blueprints that allows you to import Blueprints from other users. For example, someone could create a Blueprint that turns off all your lights and devices when you go out for the day. They could then upload this to the Home Assistant forum and that would allow any other user to import that Blueprint into their system and quickly be up and running. It's also a really great feature for someone like me who does guides and tutorials. It means I can create a blueprint and upload that for you guys to download and you can follow along with any tutorial really easily. Blueprints is a really great feature and I can't wait to see how people start to use it over the coming months as people adopt it more and more. With that said, let's jump into Lovelace and I'll show you how to use Blueprints, how we can import Blueprints from other users and also how we can create a Blueprint from an existing automation. Okay, so jumping over into the configuration page on our Home Assistant, you should now have this Blueprints menu. If you don't have that, make sure to be on the latest version of Home Assistant, and that is the 2020.12 version. If you're still running one of the old versions, so the 0.0 or 0.x releases, so 0.118 or 0.115, something like that, you'll need to update to the new version, which is 2020.12 as of the time of filming. So once you've updated to that, head back to your configuration page and you should have the new Blueprints menu. So if we click on the Blueprints menu, you'll see that we have two default um, Blueprints that comes with the 2020.12 release. And these are shipped by Home Assistant and they're just kind of example Blueprints to get you started. So what we're gonna do is just have a look at one of those example Blueprints and we'll show you exactly how they work. So if we click on the Create Automation on the Motion Activated Light, you'll see it loads up a new page and then we have um, our blueprint essentially. So at the top we have the name for the blueprint and you're gonna to want to change this name because this is the name that will actually appear in your automations menu after creating the blueprint. So I would suggest giving that a unique name. So we'll just call this blueprint test and you can give that a description if you want, if it's not obvious, um, just so that you can keep a track of all of your automations and blueprints later. If we scroll down, you'll see that it's asking us for a motion sensor. Um, it's asking us for a light and we can choose that light from an area, a device or an entity. And it's also asking us for a wait time and that is the time to leave the light on after um, a motion event has been detected on the sensor. So what we'll do is just fill that in quickly. Um, so you see that it's actually listing all of my motion sensors I currently have in my house. Um, and it's, it's listing just the motion devices only, it's not listing any others. And that's because you can configure the blueprints to only look for a certain device or a sensor or a device class. You can really tailor them down to get the list um, of just the devices you want to appear. So basically I'll select the hull motion. Actually, let's select a different one. Um, I'll select the kitchen motion. And then from there, you can either choose the area you want to turn off all the lights. So if you've grouped all of your lights into a certain area, then choosing an area is a great way to just turn off all of those lights at once. Um, 
if you don't want to choose an area or you haven't yet grouped your devices into areas, I would suggest using the um, other options. So you've got the device picker um, here. So there's some of the lights in my house. What I'm gonna do is pick the area. So I'm just gonna choose the kitchen area. And then the wait time I'm gonna to set to, let's say, 429 seconds so if we click save on that and that is our blueprint created and that is all you need to know to use blueprints within your home assistant it's as simple as that you just pick your devices pick your sensors um, configure all the options within the blueprint click save and your automation is automatically created but how do we import blueprints from other members of the community remember I talked about that sharing feature earlier well if we head back to the blueprints menu and click on the discover more blueprints it'll actually open up the home assistant forum where we can find a list of all those blueprints I mentioned earlier so these are basically blueprints created by other members of the community and if you scroll down um, you'll see I like the look of this one so this actionable notifications for Android and this was actually created by one of our community members on our discord server called Varian and if you haven't joined our discord server make sure to do so you'll find the link in the description it's an awesome community and I would highly recommend it if you haven't already joined but this guy Varian I hope I pronounced your name right thank you for creating the blueprint and we're actually going to use this as a test so if we scroll down you'll see there is um lots of information about the blueprint so it gives us details of what it does um, requirements it will give you a little screenshot of what it does um, and it'll also describe the blueprint in detail so I like the look of this one so basically what I'm going to do is highlight the URL copy that and go back to our home assistant page click on the import blueprint button down at the bottom and then paste in that URL into the box and click on preview blueprint and that's going to load up the blueprint and you'll see the description um, of the blueprint here and we can also view the blueprint content so everything that we just saw on that page so that is cool click on import blueprint and it's as simple as that you'll just you'll notice a reoccurring theme here of just how easy blueprints is to use and now we have that send actionable notica notifications for Android blueprint and we can create an automation and it's just the exact same as before you basically go through and fill in all of the details in the blueprint and that will automatically create your automation so we've seen how to use blueprints and we've also seen how to import blueprints from other members of the community but what about if we want to take an existing automation and create our own blueprint from it so remember earlier i gave that example where you have a heating control and a heating sensor for each room or zone in your house and you want to create a heating control for each zone well we can do that with blueprints and that's the kind of example i'm going to give you just now so i already have an automation that takes um, an input from a sensor and when it gets below a certain temperature it sends a signal to turn the heating control on for that zone and I want to turn that into a blueprint so this is what my basic automation looks like right it's just called heating turn on and when my office temperature goes below 18 degrees it will send a signal to turn this heating switch on and what we're gonna do is to create a new blueprint. And these are all done in YAML config files at the moment. I would assume that in the future, blueprints through the UI is coming, but at the moment, as of time of filming, they're done in YAML, but they're really simple to do. So open up your um, configuration. So I'm gonna create a new file and you're gonna to want to make sure that that is inside the blueprints and then the automation folder. So right click and create a new file. And if you aren't using Visual Studio Code to edit your config, I would highly recommend it. You can download that from the supervisor store. So right click and create a new file and I'm gonna call this set. So it's called setzoneheating.yaml and make sure it does contain that dot YAML extension at the end. And then from there, I'm just gonna start creating a new blueprint. And at the top, we define our blueprint. And then underneath that, we set a name. So I'm gonna call this set zone heating. And then under that, we also give it a description. And so this is just to keep track of what the um, blueprints do basically. So just so you don't get yourself confused, I would definitely suggest giving them in a description. I'm going to say get turn heating on when it gets cold 
And then from there, we also just define a domain. At the moment, I, th I think I'm right in saying, I could be wrong, but I think you can only define automations at the moment, but I'm hopeful that that means that there is blueprints for other types like scripts, um, hopefully coming in the future. So we define a domain there, and then in there, and then from there, we basically create our inputs. And those inputs are essentially the options that we can choose. So earlier we had the motion sensors, we had the lights and we had the, and we also had that time selector that would allow us to um, configure how long after a motion event was detected to turn the lights off. So this is, so they are called inputs and they are basically exactly as the name suggests, they take input from the user. So we define an input section at the top and then on the line underneath, I just define my first input. So the first one I'm going to create is called the heating sensor. So if we think about what we actually need for this blueprint, we need to define a sensor that has our temperature. We also need to define a switch for the um, heating to turn on. And we also need to define a temperature of at which point when it falls below a certain temperature, at which point the heating will come on. So that is our temperature in degrees. So the first one I'm creating is the heating sensor. And I give that a name of heating sensor. And that is how it will um, show up inside the blueprint UI. On the next line, I enter selector. And then I'm gonna define an entity. And my entity is gonna be for the sensor um, domain and what this does is basically restrict the user input to only be able to select sensors instead of listing all of your devices and entities so that is all I need to do for that we also need to create uh, another input called heating switch so I call that heating switch again give that a name of heating or let's call that one heater we also define a selector and then in the entity box or the entity options, we're going to define a domain and this time it's going to be for a switch. There are other ways to restrict the input as well, but I'm just going to show you these ones for now. We also need a third input and that is going to be our temperature. And that is going to be called target temperature and then this selector is going to be a number and what that does is basically give us that little um, slider or the input you know that little input slider that allows you to select a number from it and what we can do is actually restrict that input further by defining a minimum and a maximum value so I'm going to define a minimum of 10 because you probably don't want your heating below 10 degrees and I'm going to have a max of 20 but you can set them to whatever you want to do. What I'm going to do is save that for now. So our, um, if we head over to the configuration menu and then back into blueprints, you'll see that we now have a set zone heating. And if we create an automation, you'll see that our blueprint is now essentially created. And what we can do is um, we can change all these options, but you'll notice that we didn't actually define any um, action or trigger like we do with an automation. So the blueprint is essentially created. We can choose all the options, but it won't actually do anything if we run it. So you'll see here that I have a list of all my sensors. I have um, a list of my switches, and I also have that little slider. So from the minimum of 10 up to the maximum of 20. But like I say, this blueprint doesn't actually do anything because we haven't created a trigger or an action. So what I'm gonna do is to copy. So what I'm gonna do is head back to that um, automation that I showed you earlier. So the tur heating turn on one. And what I'm going to do is head up to the top right and I'm going to edit as YAML. There's different ways you can do this, but this is the quickest to demonstrate. And I'm going to actually copy that, um, that automation code that I've created. Head back to our Visual Studio code and then back to our blueprint that we just created. And then all I'm going to do is simply paste in the automation that we just copied. 
and we can get rid of the alias and the description because they are not needed because our blueprint already has a name and it has a description. And so from here, it's a simple task to just um, edit the values that are already in the automation. So there are a couple of apparent issues or obvious issues, and that is that we have already hard-coded our sensor and we've hard-coded our switch. So using a blueprint wouldn't make sense or it wouldn't work because we aren't um, taking the input from the blueprint and putting them into the automation. Well, Basically with the blueprints, you need to make sure to not hard code your sensors into the automations. And how we do that is to simply get rid of the entity IDs. And then in our entity ID, all we need to do is to enter the name of our input as defined in the blueprint. And to do that, you just use an exclamation mark and enter input. And then we take this name or this value um, up here and enter it down here. So our um, trigger is gonna be for our heating sensor and I'm gonna enter input and then heating underscore sensor. Make sure to use the input name rather than the friendly name. So not this one, make sure to use this one. So that is good. Um, in the below section, we also want to make that our variable that is in our input. And so again, that is gonna be input. And we, ch we take the name of our temperature input. So that is just temperature. Finally, in the action, the entity ID, you guessed it, is gonna be input and then heating underscore switch. If your conditions is blank within your automation, you'll also want to remove this line. Otherwise it could um, confuse the blueprint and it might not work exactly. So if you have a blank conditions, just make sure to remove that entry also. And that is essentially it. We have created our first manual blueprint. It is a very simple example, but you can expand this to use it on all of your automations. If we head back to configuration and then blueprints and into the set zone heating, we can now configure our blueprint. So I would suggest giving this a name. So I'm gonna call this set office heating. Um, and then in, as the heating sensor, I'm gonna choose office temperature. In the heater, I'm gonna choose the office heating switch. And then as the target temperature, I'm gonna set this to 16. Click on save. And now if we head back to our automations menu, and then we search for the office. So we now have that set office heating. We go in and it looks exactly like our blueprint does. So you can actually come back in and um, change the variables if you want to in the future. We can also then just um, trigger that, that automation to happen and click on execute and it executes exactly as we want. So that is how to create blueprints using an existing automation in Home Assistant. And so it's as simple as that to create your basic blueprint. Basically just copy the information or the YAML code from your existing automations and paste them into a new blueprint. Configure your inputs or your variables at the top and then save it and create your blueprint. It really is as simple as that and I think this is an excellent feature. Obviously, if you want to create more blueprints, you would just repeat the process. Um, and if you want to create more automations from your blueprint, you just go back in, create a new automation from a blueprint, and then configure different devices. And you've quickly built out your automations as you need them. And there we go guys, that is pretty much everything you need to know about getting up and running with the new Blueprints feature in Home Assistant. What do you guys think about the Blueprints feature? I'm actually super excited to see how people start to use it over the coming months. But what can you see yourself using it for? Do you think it's a useful feature? Can you see yourself using it? Make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for all your support this year. It's been absolutely incredible. I can't wait to see what we do next year. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good Christmas if I don't speak to you before. Have a good new year and enjoy spending time with your family. Make the most of it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Pew.